be with you. I want to welcome and give him his very own bulletin. Uh, this is Pastor Lee Hopp from Trinity Klein. He has been the presenter for our Oklahoma District Youth Gathering. And I asked him, I said, are you the senior pastor? He said, no, I'm the next gen pastor at Trinity Klein, which means he's the cool pastor. So we got rid of Myron this week. He's preaching up in Ed. <laughs> and we have Pastor Lee today. So welcome. He'll be sharing the, the message with us today. If you look at your bulletin during this season of these week, Sundays after Easter, we're going to look at the I Am statements of Jesus. Today, I am the bread of life. I'm going to He's talking about that in the children's message today. But also, I am starting a, a new member class today at, at 9.30, along with our other adult classes. You're all invited, but uh, if you would like just to refresh your course in the faith, you're invited to. Anybody can come anytime, but do pass it on to anybody you know that might be interested in, in learning about Messiah or joining our church or learning about the Lutheran faith. So that'll be at 9.30 in the first classroom there in the South Pod. And to all the ladies of the congregation, this little purple insert is for you. We are hosting next Saturday the LWML Spring Fling for the district. So all the information is there. The registration uh, is on the back. And Nellie Casaneda, uh, our member here, is helping coordinate that. So if you have questions, you can contact her as well. And Raise your hand if you're an LWML or here at Messiah. We've got Joyce and Mary Lou and Kathy and, and Mary, so you can ask them questions too about that, but that'll be next Saturday as well. And then if you take out this insert, everybody can help with this. This is uh, we're starting to get ready to gear up for uh, Vacation Bible School, and our theme this year is going to be Stellar Shine Jesus Light, and that's going to be uh, start on June 12th, and of course there's always donations we need of things, and um, you can sponsor kids, and we always need help and volunteers during that, that week, so that list of volunteers is here. You can just fill those out and fold them up and drop them in the offering plate when the offering gets passed uh, today. And we're going to be using Divine Service 4 for our order of worship today as well. So uh, before we begin, I invite you to stand and share the Lord's peace with each other before we join in that hymn.
the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you'd like to use the, the kneelers before you can be seated and bring a confession on that theme of Jesus as the, the bread of life, as he said, I am the bread of life, we do take a moment to pause and reflect upon and confess all of our sins, our sins of thought and, and word and deed. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. There is a hunger that lies within each of us, and when we are not careful, we will look to be filled by things that can never satisfy. As with all hunger, what is quickest and easiest may not be what is best. Jesus, you made a bold declaration, I am the bread of life. Forgive us and feed us with that which will nourish us as your people. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We stand and we continue with divine service for the Kyrie, page 204. Our first reading is found in the Old Testament in the book of Jeremiah, 
chapter 20. Jeremiah persecuted by Pashur. O Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout <coughs> violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, there is in my heart, as it were, a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary without holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him, let us denounce him, say all my close friends watching for my fall. Perhaps he will be delivered, then we can overcome him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly ashamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous, who seeks the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hand of evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second reading is in the New Testament, the book of Romans chapter 6, Dead to Sin, Alive to God. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness. But present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient, slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either to sin which leads to death, or of obedience which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you were once slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at that time from the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is the eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we'll ask you to stand as we sing the Alleluia in the verse. I said to you that you have seen me and yet you do not believe. 
All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So the Jews grumbled about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not grumble among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the man in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And today we have the privilege to celebrate the Lord's Supper, and it's custom to use the Nicene Creed on those worship celebrations, so we join in confessing our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. <clears throat> the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the to come. Amen. You may be seated. I don't know if we have any little ones out there this morning, but come on down if we do. If not, I'll just do this for the folks tuning in at home as well and us here. If you haven't yet, uh, do tear out the little connect cards from the bulletins, please, and pass those down to the end of the row. So, Lee, tell them what the theme for the Vocate in Christ is. I need a hero. I need a hero. So I'm going to ask you all today, who's your favorite superhero character? Anybody? Yeah, yeah my mom says, uh, that's my mom, Lee. <laughs> she said, Mark Mitchell. Who's your, who's your uh, from the comics, let me put it that way, who's your favorite superhero? Superman. Superman. Now, who else likes Superman? Okay. Uh, is anybody Spidey Sense tingling? <laughs> Okay, so Spider-Man, who are some of the, of course there's a new crop of Batman, right? All of those, 
us. So tell me some characteristics of the superheroes. How do we know that they're superheroes and not just a normal everyday person? They save people, okay, definite. They have some kind of special gift or superpower, you know, like, okay, what, su what are some of Superman's uh, special powers? He can fly. Uh, I saw the uh, laser vision that he has. He's super strong, right? Like, remember, you know, up in the sky, a bird, no, plane. no, it's Superman, right? Uh, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Well, yeah, so they, they have superpowers, and their job usually is to use, if they're a good superhero, uh, a hero side, the, not the villain, they're to save people. And one of the other things, what do they wear that kind of tells you that they're a superhero? He's like, what does Superman wear? He has a cape. So I brought my superhero today, and I know he's a superhero because he has his own cape. And see the name of my superhero? Uh, that's Wonder, Wonder Bread. <laughs> yeah, and I, I thought about Wonder Bread because today, of course we know all the superheroes, though, those are make-believe, they're not real. But uh, the kids and, and Pastor Lee have been focusing on a hero who is very real and he doesn't wear a, a cape, but we might say maybe he has an S, not on his chest, but an S for being our, our Savior. And in the Gospel of John, and we're going to look starting today, uh, and in the coming Sundays as well, we'll look at these different I am sayings of Jesus. And I am, of course, that is the, in the Old Testament, that was Yahweh. And whenever the Hebrews heard that, they knew they were talking about someone who is truly wonderful. And Jesus, in these I am sayings, will say some pretty amazing things about himself. So today he says, I am the bread of life. By the way, I forgot to tell you, you know what uh, Wonder Bread's superpower is? He makes delicious French toast. <laughs> but I'm done. <laughs> Yeah, maybe Margie will make that when I get home today for sure. Uh, but he is the bread of life, and it's a privilege for us today, too, to be able to receive him as the bread of life in this miraculous way. Because, of course, one of the things that the heroes can do is they can do miraculous things. They have super, extra human powers. And Jesus, as the true hero, as the true bread of life, is going to do a miracle today. Right here, in this place, he is going to give us himself. His body with that bread. His blood with that wine. And in that miracle, he gives us again the gift of forgiveness. He really is a hero. He is the hero that we need most of all. Because we heard in the epistle reading that Joyce read, the wages of sin is death. And that's where we would all be without our hero, Jesus. But there's also the wonderful gospel message in there. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So he is the bread of life. Let me offer a prayer for us today. Dear Lord Jesus, we rejoice that you indeed are our true hero. You are the bread of life who gives yourself to us, especially today as we celebrate your supper. You come to us in, in this wonderful gift of your body and blood with this bread and wine to not only grant us the gift of forgiveness, but to give us strength, your strength, to strengthen our faith as we walk with you. And so we give you thanks and praise in your holy name. And as the bread of life and in our Easter joy, we say, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. For our hymn of the day, we're going to sing two verses of hymn 540, Christ the Word of God in Christ. We're going to sing verse 2 and then verse 6, which is a Trinity verse. I'll invite you to stand for that verse.
words from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, greetings to you from Trinity Klein Lutheran Church in Spring, Texas, uh, where I serve, as Pastor said, as the next gen pastor. I admit that is way too hip of a name for me. It's a new role for me. I was in student ministry for my first six years there, just transitioned, but it is still an absolute joy to be able to serve there, walking alongside of all those from birth through young adult. Greetings also. Uh, another hat that I wear, my greetings from Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. Uh, I serve in a part-time capacity, filling my full-time call in Texas, but in a part-time role on the recruitment team of Concordia Seminary, just promoting the question, promoting uh, the thought of have you ever considered church work and inviting God's people, uh, the congregation to send it to do the same. When you see in someone those gifts, those skills, it could be used for ministry and for the full-time capacity. Ask the question, have you ever thought about church work? It was a joy this past weekend. Thank you so much for hosting, uh, to be here in this place as you gathered from across this district to come together for OK in Christ. And as Pastor Munchau said, our theme was, I need a hero. And that's certainly where we began our journey as we started Friday night together, looking around at the problems that we see in our world, the problems that we see in our own lives, and we were left in one place saying, I need a hero. I cannot conquer all these things by myself. And as I look into this world, that's what I know that I need. We then took the time on Saturday morning to talk about how when you're looking around in that world, you're looking for a hero, and sometimes you're looking, it seems, in all the wrong places. Because as we talked about last night, no matter how good people may be, no matter how great help, people may be, when we look at our world, when you look at the entire history, you'll find that there is only one hero, and his name is Jesus. We had some fun looking at these great superhero movies and stories that we've come to know and love over the years to see how they don't really want to create their own stuff, they're copying, they're echoing the greatest story that has ever been told, and we were able to see how time and again these superheroes echo these themes of redemption and justice and good triumphing over evil and sacrifice and the great good news of taking people from death into life. And our theme verse over this weekend, the verses came from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Where the author of the Hebrews says, Therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The invitation is for us to keep our eyes on Jesus, and yet the reality for many of us is that we're often distracted. And we can become distracted by so many things in this world. Maybe it's because this world just has so much to offer to us, or so we think. We find ourselves so busy with the work that is placed in front of us to be able to do. We find ourselves busy with uh, politics, busy with the news, busy with all the different things happening in our communities, and we can find ourselves distracted. We can find ourselves distracted by certainly the work that Satan is doing in our lives. I pointed out to our students this weekend, here's the thing about Satan, and it needs to be said because we need to know this as he comes at us. Satan has only one weapon. Scripture makes this abundantly clear for us. And what's that one weapon? A lie. That's it. When Satan speaks, when Satan lies, he speaks his native tongue. Right? And he's so good at the lies that he tells us, so good that it distracts us from keeping our eyes on the one true hero that this world has ever known. He says to us things like, you're not worth it. He says to us things like, the things that you've said, the things that you've done, the person that you have become has made you too far gone, unlovable, not valuable. 
not to the people in your life, not to your God, who sent a Savior to save the world, not even me. It's all lies. And sometimes those lies are on the other end of the spectrum. Actually, he says to you, you're actually so good that you don't even need a Savior. You know better that God, He created things all the way back then. You need to do you. Do what you feel. That's all in the past. Right? Satan is so good at distracting us with these lies that we need to be able to be grounded in the truth. Because as we hear these lies, certainly those ones about your worth and your value, it can leave you in a place of fear. It can leave you in a place where you look at your world and the brokenness that is all over the place that we see, saying, I need a hero. And after this, this past week, and our students know, when those times come, when those lives are coming your way, you don't have to say to Satan, I need a hero. You can say to Satan, I have a hero. And he is with me always to the very end of the age. When you think about all these distractions that come at us, know that you're not alone. Right? So interesting. John 6 is the top, my favorite chapter of the Bible, Pastor. It really is. You think about Jesus carrying out his ministry there, and you can find the disciples so distracted in that moment. Jesus, don't say these things. All the people are about to walk away. All the people are about to go, you're giving us a hard teaching. They're distracted by wanting power, distracted by wanting numbers and crowds. And the distractions didn't stop there. After that very first Easter, what happened? The apostles were hiding after Jesus' death and resurrection. They were locked in different rooms out of fear of the Jews, fear that they would meet their own end the same way the rabbi did, fear that they'd be killed for having followed him. And friends, what did Jesus do in the middle of all those distractions that were taking them away from the truth? He met them right where they were. And the first thing he says to them, peace be with you. Speaking of distractions, we can cue Thomas, certainly. Thomas, who was consumed by all the different distractions of the situation and saying, I know that you all hear these things, but there's no way this could possibly be true. And what did Jesus do for Thomas? He showed up exactly where he promised to be, to be there with Thomas, to be there with the disciples, to be there for them. And friends, he's still showing up for you today in the midst of whatever distractions are trying to take you away from that singular truth that you have a hero that has conquered the greatest enemy that could ever be, who has conquered death. And how does he show up time and again? Well, it's the reason we have gathered here together as brothers and sisters in Christ, the reason, the only reason why we come together in the first place, because it's here that God meets you. It's here on the receiving end of God's word, both preached and received through the bread and the wine and the sacrament of baptism, that God shows up for you every single time to remind you of his presence and to affirm his presence with you. Right? Scripture teaches us this about God's word and how incredible it is. It says God's word is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, discerning the intentions of the heart. When you find yourselves, when we find ourselves on the receiving end of God's word, he is actually working inside of our lives. He is going to work doing the great things of giving us gifts of forgiveness and salvation, full and free to all who would believe and receive. It creates, it nurtures, it lives out its fullness right before us. It's here as you and I, as we gather together as church, not at church, but God's word time and again delivers those goods. It sharpens our minds, it deepens our faith, it nurtures our soul, it heals wounds, it awakes the sleepiness inside of us, it strengthens the spirit, and works on the wholeness of who you are every single time that he places you on the receiving end of it. And he always does it in the community of your brothers and sisters. And this is why we call this a service. 
whether it's a, a worship service or the divine service, it's all the same idea. Here God is serving you time and again with his word and his gifts of forgiveness and salvation. And it's through his word that you can be grounded and it will help you to lay aside every hindrance, every distraction, every sin that ensnares you because of the promise that he has given to you, the promise that is yours in your baptism that his word is planted there. And what sorts of things, right, does that powerful word that you're on the receiving end of say and do to you every single time? It tells you and assures you that you're loved. You may not be perfect, because you may not be perfect. You are not perfect. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But you are loved right where you are. It says, peace be with you in the midst of your fear, and in return you receive that peace. It says, come all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. And as you find yourself in, in receiving end of those words, you welcome that rest that he gives you. Sometimes in that moment, sometimes it takes some time. He says to you, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. And as you repeat those words back to yourselves, you can find a taste of that calm that he is speaking about. His word says that for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. And with those words, you, your whole person, is pointed to the author and perfecter of your faith, to Jesus, fixing your eyes on him so that he can lead the way forward. And speaking of the way that he shows up, speaking of the way forward, there's one more time that he's going to show up in a pretty powerful way. This past week, in one of the songs that we sang, multiple times was a song called Glorious Day. It had great lyrics there. I didn't rescue, my sin was heavy. The chains break and the weight of your glory. Talking about this gift of freedom that we receive the moment that God's word takes root in our heart, the faith is placed there. Talking about the promise of our baptism. Talking about that glorious day. But the truth of the matter is, there is an even greater and more glorious day still to come when Jesus will show up and meet you right where you are. And maybe on that day, you've still got life, or maybe you've already been called to rest wherever it is He will meet you. And He will invite you to that greater, more glorious day when He will raise all believers in the faith to a new kingdom and a new reality where there is no more death, where He's already taken of that, where there's no more sin, no more brokenness, a world we can't fully comprehend on this side in the same way that Thomas and the disciples couldn't fully, fully comprehend what it meant that Jesus was standing there in the flesh with his wounds still very evident. And that will be a great, glorious day. So until then, friends, go forth and let him be the hero that he always has been. Stop searching the other places of this world to find a hero because you just won't, not like him. You won't find a hero like him in anyone else's eyes. Keep your eyes on him and in doing so, watch as the world around you will continue to come to know him as they see the work that he's carrying out, not just before you, but through you as he uses your words, your attitudes, your actions, to bear witness to others of the hero that you have, making an eternal difference for all that you'll encounter, so that they too, as Jesus says four times in John chapter 6, will be raised on the last day. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses every thought guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Lee. We now have opportunity to give thanks to our hero with our gifts and tithes and offerings.
your attention to the back of our bulletins there for the prayer needs of the body of Christ here at Messiah. A couple of additional prayer requests heard from uh, Keith Beatty's uh, daughter that he's been at the Baptist Village Rehab. He's trying to renew some health and strength. And then Marty got notice this morning that her uh, cousin, Stephen Basinger, passed away last night. He suffered from epilepsy and I think he some kind of seizure during the night, so I want to lift up uh, her Aunt Phoebe and the rest of the Basinger family uh, for peace and comfort and the hope of, of Christ's Easter resurrection and, and that promise of new life as we just heard in the message today. So at the end of each petition, I'll end with the Lord in your mercy and invite you to respond here on our prayer. Lord, you are the bread of life. It is through your perfect life, your sacrificial death, and your victorious Easter resurrection that we find hope and peace in the midst of our, our struggles and even facing our own mortality. May that Easter victory give peace to all of our families who are mourning the death of their loved ones. And we add to those prayers of Margie and her family as they mourn the the death of her cousin Steve Basinger may be with her Aunt Phoebe and the rest of the cousins and the extended family and surround them and fill them with your hope and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also give thanks, Heavenly Father, for the many opportunities we have to, to get into your word and to have that word feed us as Christ came to, to be the word made flesh and how you would equip us and build our faith through the Word. Thank you for being with and blessing our district youth gathering this weekend. We also thank you for the opportunities we have to gather in your Word, whether it be here on Sunday mornings or in our weekday classes or our small groups. Pray a blessing upon the new member class as it begins today as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You and Pastor Myron as well, as he shares the word of hope and peace with our brothers and sisters in Christ in Edmond. Uh, we lift up the ministry to you, Heavenly Father, and pray that you do continue to provide uh, pastors and, and teachers to help equip the saints and to grow your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also lift up to you those who, who are struggling with health issues, many in our church family who battle cancer. We lift up uh, Rob and Sandra Long's good friend, Rachel Mueller, and thank you for her successful colon cancer surgery, but bless her in recovery and whatever treatment she might be receiving. We echo those prayers for you in health and strength, for Paula's niece, Christine, for Cindy Hoffman, uh, for our music director, Ken's mother, Paige, and his aunt, Inger, as well. We lift up Joel Rollins to you, and Kelsey Gethel, and Genevieve, and Ted, and Jackie Reed, good friend and former member of our church, good friend of Candace Kale. May you also be with Sally Baker, Randy's mother. Thank you for uh, the turnaround in her health that she is improving. We lift up Jean Hardick's niece Susan and her ongoing health issues. Gail Miller and Jan Heidorn as she recovers from her fall. May you be with Margie Meyer, too, as she awaits uh, her the surgery on her neck. And we have Keith Beatty, who's receiving a rehab at, at Baptist Village. And so, Lord, we entrust them all to your care, praying for renewed health and strength according to your good and gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We now turn to the service of the sacrament on page 208. Let's ask the Spirit to prepare our hearts to come to the Lord's table and Truly our hero in the wonder and the miracle of this sacrament unites himself, his body and blood, with this bread and wine to give us that gift of forgiveness, but also that to strengthen us in that earthly journey of faith. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. 
Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on that night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We continue with the August day, and uh, Pastor Lee and I and our elder will commune each other, and then we welcome you to the Lord's table as well. <laughs>
body of Lord Jesus Christ, give it to you. True body of Lord Jesus Christ, give it to you. Take the true body of Christ, give it to you. Take the true body of Lord Jesus Christ, give it to you. Take the true body of Lord Jesus Christ, give it to you. Take the true body of Lord Jesus Christ, give it to you. Take me, this is the true body of Christ.
give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is Abide with Me.
That's awesome. So are your parents walking around? Yes, they are. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. This and Elburn. It was funny. We were setting up Friday, and, and I, I, your mom walked in, and I thought, I was like, I, I didn't realize where you had moved. And so I was like, well, is it Oklahoma, or am I just seeing someone that looks like someone? All right, that's awesome. I'll have to say hey to him. Yes. 